Missouri. Benjamin Singer is the communications director for Clean Missouri. Good morning, Benjamin Singer. Good morning. Thanks for having us, guys. Uh, one of the, bi the, the, the big things tomorrow is, uh, well, there's a couple of misnomers about this. This redistricting or doing away with gerrymandering has nothing to do with the federal House race. It has to do with right. the state and Senate races, the House races and the state Senate races. You nailed it. We have a situation right now where the legislature is taking nearly $900,000 a year in lobbyist gifts on one side and on the other side has almost no accountability to the people of Missouri because over 90% of races for the state legislature are not competitive, either safe Democrat or safe Republican. And that means while these legislators are in Jeff City talking to a few big donors or party leaders or these lobbyists who are giving them these lavish gifts, we can't hold them accountable. Because once you're elected, once you're an incumbent, you know, it's almost impossible to get defeated. The argument against this is if you don't like gerrymandering, the Amendment 1 is gerrymandering on steroids. And the argument is, wait a minute, if I'm in North County and I'm in a heavily Democratic area, where are you going to get a 50-50 district? You've got to encompass Ladue into North City, and then you have to accompany Hannibal. And so you have a, a district of Hannibal, Ladue, and North City, which represents three very different groups of people to make it a 50-50 district. What do exactly. You say? So that's why Amendment 1 doesn't require 50-50 districts. It, Amendment 1 is very simple, which is why we have an amazing bipartisan coalition of reformers from Senator John Danforth to the AARP, the League of Women Voters, the NAACP. So what a, Amendment 1 requires is where we have districts that are being drawn de deliberately to be non-competitive, we need those to be drawn to be competitive. So there are parts of St. Louis County, West County, and other places where there are districts that are being drawn to protect or hurt certain politicians or parties, depending on who was, you know, doing, pulling the strings behind closed doors at the time when new maps were being drawn. But certainly in North County, for instance, especially if you're talking about African-American representation, Amendment 1 makes it crystal clear that minority uh, representation in the legislature must be protected. That's why it has the support of every civil rights and redistricting expert organization in the state okay, and the country, but, but, including but, the NAACP. Okay, but, but explain to me, sure. this is not a 50-50 state. This isn't that this is a 60 40 state, 55 45 state. It's yeah. predominantly Republican state. Agreed. Uh, so, how do you draw the districts more competitive if there's more of one and less than the other? Yeah, so you're still going to have districts that are safe Republican in Southwest Missouri, Northwest Missouri, many places in Missouri. You're going to have districts that are safe Democrat in the middle of St. Louis City. Um, but so, Amendment 1 doesn't change that. That's why Amendment 1 says to make districts more competitive as practicable. But it, Amendment 1 ensures, it uses math to ensure that no party is given an unfair advantage. And exactly to what you were saying, McGraw, you know, Missouri, the people of Missouri need to decide who they want to represent them. And that's not the situation we have right now, where we have partisan appointees on both sides, mostly lobbyists, politicians, and political consultants who are drawing these lines. What Amendment 1 does, it says, okay, let's look at the people of Missouri as a whole. Let's look at how they vote in presidential, gubernatorial, and U.S. Senate elections. And what's the, let's start with the partisan breakdown there, okay? So whether they're voting for Trump or Hawley or McCaskill or whoever. And so then we say, all right, let's try to get the legislature to match up a little bit more closely with what the breakdown is of the people of Missouri as a whole, and let's also try to maximize competitive districts because we don't want, you know, anyone to who should be in a competitive race to be protected because they were connected with the lobbyist who was drawing the lines behind closed doors. Quickly, how do the how are the maps drawn today? Great question. A lot of That's why I asked it. Yeah, a lot of confusion <laughs> about this. So right now, the two parties vet the people who they want to be drawing the lines and then they appoint them they nominate them and then the governor technically appoints them but it's from a list provided by the political parties right. so these like i said the vast majority of these fall into three categories lobbyists politicians and political consultants okay. and so then those people who are, are tasked with drawing the lines talk to their friends in the legislature uh, who you know are part of the parties that appointed them to these boards 
and they draw the lines. If you talk to anyone, but but, but you, you can you can point it in saying these. But it's it's bipartisan. You've got one from one side and one from the other side, and a demographer, right? No. So under Amendment One, yes. Currently, no, and that's part of the problem. So right now, as you know, there are people on both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. who are not interested in being held accountable to the people of Missouri, and that's a situation we have often well, with the two but, political but parties. They're, they're held accountable when they vote, um, unless. Not over 90% of the districts are not competitive. Go ahead, you have a question? Yeah, I, because the the demographer, uh, the, the selection of the demographer still, in my estimation, looks like it could become just as partisan as it is today. If you, if you, you know, you talk about the auditor making the decision. Right, you have one demographer correct, making the decision as opposed to this three-person panel. Who is still tied to an office holder. So that that's what I right, think. Right, one a lot office of holder. So great right. question. So any time that there are people involved who are in power, corruption is possible, right? Which is why what's even more important in Amendment One, in the part about redistricting, is that is not who's drawing the maps, but that they but how the maps are being drawn, which is they must follow clear and transparent criteria that ensure no party is given an unfair advantage, that protect minority representation and that maintain compact, contiguous districts, and we're adding requirements for house maps, which currently don't have to follow city and county lines at all. We're adding requirements for house maps to follow city and county lines when possible to stop communities from being divided unnecessarily for purely political reasons. So the demographer does add some important independence to the process, to a process that's right now controlled by partisans on both sides, but also adds transparency because right now the maps are being drawn behind closed right, doors. Right, but the demographer answers to the auditor. No. Or to the to to who? It's nobody. It's not put in amendment the, the, 1. They answer to the criteria. They have to follow the rules and if anyone breaks the rules, they can be sued by the people of Missouri. But Any the auditor, citizen. where does the auditor come in in all this? So the auditor plays a purely administrative role during the application process. The auditor outlines what makes for a qualified demographer. People apply through that office. The auditor passes along qualified applicants to the Senate majority and minority leader who can then agree on a demographer. But if there's a disagreement. But again, Who's drawing the maps matters less than the new rules that have to be followed. Right now, it's very loosey-goosey, very subjective and subject to corruption and deals behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Math is nonpartisan. Uh, <laughs> tell that to a statistician. <laughs> uh, uh, Benjamin Singer, uh, a website to find out more for people who are interested. Absolutely. We encourage everyone to read it. Learn for themselves, make an informed decision, which we think is to vote yes on one. So go to cleanmissouri.org. You can see the whole policy. You can read it for yourself. You can see our broad bipartisan coalition Clean supporting Missouri .org. cleaning up Missouri politics. Cleanmissouri.org. I have to give you an A for um, marketing. It's a great it's a great name, right? Because the people who are against it are for a dirt, quote unquote dirty Missouri. I would uh, agree. <laughs> Benjamin Singer, thanks for coming in. Thank you guys. Ben Fred gonna talk a little